we have a guest in the studio. She joins us this morning from the Cooperative University of Kenya, the Vice Chancellor, uh, Deputy Vice Chancellor of Finance, Planning and Administration, Professor Esther Gisharu. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us today. Karibu to the Situation Room. This is where you're sitting is a hot seat. We hope to make it comfortable for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, enjoy yourself mm -hmm. as we gear towards celebrating uh, Ushirika Day this Saturday. It's celebrated every first Saturday of July. Mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll, you'll tell us about that day and, and, and why we need to celebrate it. And then we look at, at the cooperative movement in this country. Mm -hmm. You're one person who is in the university that teaches cooperative mm -hmm. uh, movement and also you deal with many cooperatives over the very many years of your service. Mm -hmm. So let's just start by what is the International Day of Cooperatives and why is it important? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yes, the International Day of Cooperatives is a very important day for the cooperative movement in this country and not just in this country. It is a universal matter, it's a global matter uh, because the cooperative movement is not isolated to each country. We have cooperative movements in many countries and then these cooperative movements are affiliated to our apex body which we call the International Cooperative Alliance. And the International Cooperative Alliance is the one which uh, guides and coordinates the celebration of the International Cooperative Day in all countries. Uh, and so for many years back, from many years back, uh, the International Cooperative Alliance said for the first Saturday, the first Saturday of every month, every year, the first Saturday of July, every year, mm -hmm. all countries should celebrate this day to mark the achievement that they have made in their own countries and so that we can together in solidarity so the impact of cooperatives mm. in your own country in our own countries and all over the world mm. yes. and and prof why why are cooperatives important i mean we've seen them uh, looking around the world we've seen the heavy impact that they've had in the scandinavian countries for example and that was we saw the introduction of that mm. why are they important for countries why are they important for people and communities mm. Mm. yes uh, Cooperatives actually are a, bi uh, a unique cooperative, uh, a unique mode of doing business. Mm. You'll find that uh, in cooperatives, what an individual cannot do on their own, when they come together and they join a cooperative, they are able to do it because of the economies of scale. And when people come together in a cooperative, the cooperative uh, uh, and so as that they identify their needs mm -hmm. so that uh, it's not just a group. Mm -hmm. Actually, we, when we define a cooperative, we say that it is an association of people. Association as opposed to a group because association, they have something in common mm -hmm. uh, because a cooperative identifies the needs mm -hmm. of this common uh, group or association of people and then develops services or a product to address those needs. Mm. Yeah, and so the things that, um, for example, if it is in farming, a small scale farmer will farm a small plot. Mm -hmm. They don't have means of transport, but when they come together as cooperatives, they are able to pool their produce, get transport as a pool, and they are able also to obtain market as a pool. Mm -hmm. And that makes things easy. Uh, that's why we say that uh, with the cooperatives, we can achieve so much more. In fact, I normally say that uh, if cooperatives were not invented, mm -hmm. today they would be invented. They would have to be invented because we can't progress without cooperatives. Right. So, Professor Gesheiro, as you celebrate um, Ushirika Day this Saturday, what has the achievement of cooperatives in Kenya been? Yes, as we celebrate, um, Kenya actually has been uh, very much on the limelight as far as cooperatives are concerned. If you consider the countries of Africa, you will find that uh, many countries come to learn from Kenya. 
Because in Kenya, we have different types of cooperatives, and which I must say they are doing all quite very well. We have agricultural cooperatives, uh, like I'm, I've said, where farmers uh, produce together, put their produce, and then they are able to market together. Uh, we have financial cooperatives. The financial cooperatives are uh, what are commonly known in this country as the circles. Mm. Mm -hmm. Although people have started calling every cooperative a circle, a circle yes. mm. which is not right. Circles are only savings and credit cooperatives. Those who um, organize their members to save and from their savings, they are given loans. Those are the only cooperatives that are qualified to be called circles. The others have their own names. Mm. Mm -hmm. Even like these matatus, you yes. see they bought mm. matatu circle. Mm. They are not circles. Those are transport cooperatives. But because the word circle became very well known, it was really well captured. Mm. Even other countries in the in Kenya, it was coined here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember it was those days of the uh, the, the former minister, Maina Wajege, who was the minister for cooperatives. Mm -hmm. So he was very innovative. We came up with that acronym. Mm -hmm. And uh, up to now, it is working very well. Mm -hmm. So the savings and credit cooperatives have done very well. Mm -hmm. And uh, many people can tell you that uh, without them, they would not have taken their children to school, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they would not have built... Uh, they are less dense your homes because many people have borrowed from their circles uh, to build in their less dense your homes. Yeah, they, they would not have, uh, even uh, they have gotten loans uh, to work in their agricultural land uh, to produce for food security. Uh, so cooperatives in that area, they have done very well. We have other types of cooperatives like housing cooperatives. Mm. Housing cooperatives are also very well known in Kenya for providing shelter to their people. So uh, the housing cooperatives are able to help members to buy land and then to build. And that way, uh, members who would not have owned uh, land and even housing shelter on their own through the cooperative because they pull their resources, they buy the land together, it is subdivided, they get their plot. And like in this country, we have a housing cooperative union uh, called the National Housing Cooperative Union. Mm -hmm. And this is the one that coordinates matters of housing. So everybody who is a member, uh, because we have the what we call the primary cooperatives well, housing now, being members to the union, mm -hmm. then they are able to be coordinated, they get their, their, their plot, they build their houses, and uh, there are many examples uh, which other countries come to see and learn from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, there are also handicraft cooperatives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like uh, Wakamba Handicraft, and um, many members are there. They produce their handicraft together. You can imagine when um, uh, an individual is producing their handicraft and they have to sell on their own. But when you come together, you form a market. So even when the tourists come, mm. they can see that uh, this is not a one person, it's a full market. And they get attracted, so they come and buy. They can also pull together and market their produce to their product to other countries. Do and we have numbers of, um, are we measuring in terms of what's the, what are the number of people who are, I, who are in cooperatives? What's the contribution of the cooperatives to the, mm -hmm. to the economy? Mm -hmm. or, or is this measured? Yes, like for example, the numbers. Uh, today we have about uh, 20,000 registered cooperatives. Uh, the register may not be very clean because sometimes it is accumulative those ones which have ever been registered. Mm. Yeah, but uh, even that being the case, you can see 20,000 is a huge number. And um, when I saw the last statistic quoted, it also said that about um, 14 million people were benefiting from cooperatives. Um, and that is, that is also a big number, even if we look at the population of uh, about uh, 45, 50 million. Mm. Uh, so it is uh, quite a good proportion of, the, of that number. Yeah, so we also know that cooperatives 
uh, have contributed about 45% of our country's GDP. Yeah, in terms of the gross domestic uh, product mm. is about 45%. And in terms of um, national savings and investment is about that 1%. So it is uh, quite a huge contribution to this economy. And uh, no wonder that uh, the government of Kenya also attaches a lot of importance to cooperatives. Yeah, you know for, for a long time, apart from the very recent uh, past, we have had a dedicated ministry mm -hmm. in charge of cooperatives. Yeah. But uh, now, even though we are working together with uh, other departments, still we have a state department of cooperatives under the Ministry of um, Industrialization, mm -hmm. Investment and Cooperatives. So we have got our own uh, principal secretary. And uh, as the accounting officer, then we know uh, it works very well for the for the sector. Yeah, of course, we loved it when it was a full-fledged ministry. Mm. But we also understood the way the political setup. You cannot have um, maybe a ministry for every other sector. There will be too many. Mm. But uh, we are there. We are comfortable with the State Department of Cooperatives. And well, there's a limitation in terms of the, how many ministries a government can create as well. Mm -hmm. And I think the, having a state department that still deals with cooperatives mm -hmm. as a standalone, I think it's still a big thing. Yeah. The question would be, how much facilitation, how much budget, budgetary allocation does it get? How many programs are actually being supported um, mm -hmm. from the national level mm -hmm. by the national government to support mm -hmm. the development and growth of cooperatives? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Probably, maybe in terms of uh, budget, that uh, could uh, be best answered by the minister itself because I work at the Cooperative University. Mm. But uh, what I know is that, uh, yeah, the ministry has been saying that uh, they would like to be allocated more budget given that uh, the sector that the ministry commands is a huge sector and which is contributing uh, quite a lot to the economic development of this country. So even though they get uh, uh, budgetary professions, uh, I'm sure, and I have had the officers from the ministry say they can do, uh, they can do with more mm. to be able to reach out to the cooperatives. Now, currently, with the um, Constitution of Kenya 2010, the cooperatives were defaulted, and uh, the cooperative function was defaulted. Mm. So the cooperative function uh, mostly is coordinated at the county government levels. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of that, probably the argument is that uh, at the headquarters, what we need is like a secretariat mm -hmm. to coordinate all these things. Mm -hmm. And you know, cooperatives, they are supposed to be like private organizations. The government partners with them to support them. And uh, so in that case, uh, the government now doing the work of a secretariat, I'm sure they can do well, even with the small budget that they have been given. And the law of the government currently is to provide a conducive environment by developing the right policies and the right legislation. Mm -hmm. So, for example, in this country, we have the National Cooperative Development Policy. And we also have the Cooperative Societies Act. Mm. So that is what the government needs to work on and do it well, because a bad policy will kill, kill cooperatives, yeah. and a good policy will make cooperatives thrive. And based on the policy, then we now develop the Cooperative Societies Act mm. and other legislations that govern cooperatives. Yeah, because apart from the Corporate Societies Act, which we are, we are devising now, uh, there are also other legislations. Like we have the SACO Societies Act. Yeah, because the SACOs, because of their specialization, we realize that uh, they cannot be well catered for by a general act mm. that caters for all these others, agriculture, marketing, handicraft, housing, and so a specialized act was done for them. And then 
a circle regulatory authority created. We call it in the, the acronym for that is SASLA. And then through SASLA, we are able to implement that uh, Circle Societies Act mm. for the savings and credit cooperatives. Mm. And I think that is why they, they have done very well in Kenya uh, because they are regulated just like the banks are regulated. So once you are in a member of a circle that is regulated, mm. you are sure your money is safe. Mm -hmm. And that attracts more membership to to join the, the circles. Right. Prof, yeah. I find it interesting the way you've actually told us there are very many different uh, cooperatives mm -hmm. in the country. Yeah. Uh, Matatus are not circles. Matatus are, are transport cooperatives. Yes. And then there's the circles. Where do you place merry-go-rounds, investment banks, and uh, not investment banks, but investment groups, chamas, mm. and, and table banking? Are those cooperatives? No. Those, those ones, they are groups of people who have come together. To qualify to be a cooperative, you must be registered by the State Department of Cooperatives. There is um, uh, somebody we call the Commissioner for Cooperative Development. And one of his uh, roles is to register cooperatives. Mm. So if you form just a group and it is not registered, it is not, it doesn't call, qualify to be called a cooperative. And the word cooperatives is actually preserved for those true cooperatives which are registered. Mm. For a group to enjoy the privilege of being called a cooperative, there are also some requirements. And uh, some of these requirements mainly is to follow the universally accepted cooperative principles and cooperative values. So, and they are documented. Even when a cooperative is formed following the Cooperative Societies Act, mm. uh, and you will find that uh, in the act and in the policy that I talked about, these values and principles are um, embedded there. So even when a uh, primary cooperative is formed, they also embed the principles and values. So there are those values, uh, values of uh, equity, equality, uh, solidarity, democracy. Mm. Uh, those are uh, some of the basic values. And we also have ethical values of honesty, uh, ac accountability, uh, self-responsibility, and all those put together, and then now when uh, you meet as a cooperative, a potential cooperative, the requirement of the fact that the business you want to do will be feasible mm. because a feasibility study will be, have been done, then the commissioner for cooperatives will register that cooperatives when it meets all those requirements. So it's not every group that comes up mm. that qualifies to be called a cooperative but they like to call them cooper themselves cooperatives because the word cooperative is known and associated with the success yeah and that is why you have seen even some uh, i would call them fairly funny uh groups you know there are groups that come and uh, pseudo people mm. their money and then people start saying those are cooperatives mm. And they had never been cooperatives. They are just spoiling the name of the cooperative. Sure. So the cooperative is structured and has to be uh, well registered. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, would you say that cooperatives are playing their role in empowering the, let's say, like in the agriculture sector, the small farmer? Mm -hmm. Because we've seen these cooperatives suffer under mismanagement. Mm -hmm. We've seen the plight of farmers get worse. Mm -hmm much as they are members of the cooperative because of the context in which they work. Mm -hmm. So what have you, would you say that um, the cooperatives are really succeeding in the objective or what are those barriers? Yes, the, I would say the cooperatives are succeeding, but uh, there are challenges that uh, they go through. Uh, for example, uh, we have had challenges in the governance of cooperatives uh, you find that uh, members, if they are not properly educated, they elect leaders who are not, you know, worthy the leadership. Mm. And uh, because of that, you now find that uh, the cooperative is going in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so, so that is one, one of the challenges. And also, you know, uh, capitalization. Some of the cooperatives, they don't have enough money because you know the funding of cooperatives comes from the members. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so sometimes you find that uh, they are not able to raise enough capital and you have to keep on to talking to the members to tell them it's good to save uh, because those savings are the ones that will help the cooperative to grow. Mm. But you know, like now in our Kenyan society, even at large, saving has not been our culture. But in cooperatives, we tra train and teach people to, to save. So when we realize those challenges, uh, we then come in handy to address them. Uh, and um, some of them, or most of them, we, uh, we, uh, we, we had them through training. You'll find that I said we have principles that we follow. And uh, maybe because of time, I may not um, mention all of them, but there are seven. Mm -hmm. Seven principles. One of them is voluntary and open membership mm -hmm. that you can join a cooperative and live at your own will. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to be forced. Then the democratic member control that when you are there, whether you have invested one million or 10 million shillings and another one has invested only 10,000, all of you have one foot. So it's one member, one foot in a cooperative. And the cooperative members, through that principle, they are the supreme organization in making the decisions of the cooperative uh, through, uh, through the, uh, the, the annual general meetings. Yeah, so when we now realize the, the, then there is uh, other co um, uh, others like economic member participation, cooperation among cooperatives, autonomy and independence, and then concern for community. But the one that I want to come to mm. is the fifth one, it is called education, training, and information. And this is the one that has helped us to meet those challenges that we fight. Uh, you will realize that education and training in a cooperative take place at different levels. Even the cooperative itself is supposed to budget for training. And uh, they train their members, and they train their leaders and their employees. And because that may not be enough, that is why you fight across even the country and across all over the world, cooperative training institutions were set up. So it's not by accident that we have the Cooperative University of Kenya. It actually started as a, as a small college, mm. as a small department in the past. And as we moved on, it became a college, and now it is a university. So the Cooperative University of Kenya um, offers programs to address some of these needs that we are talking, the challenges that we are talking about. So we have uh, governance programs. Uh, we have financial management programs. Uh, we have you know, programs in any area that we think the cooperatives have challenges. Mm -hmm. And apart from the, because as a university, you know, we have to learn the degree, uh, master's, PhD programs, but we also have arms that we have set to run these short tailored courses mm. to address the current prob uh, problems within the cooperative uh, sector. So we, through this principle number five, uh, we are able to mount relevant training Pro programs. Mm. What about Tibet? Because majority of, um, you know, mm. the, the membership mm. would in cooperatives mm. would probably be informal mm. um, and Tibet mm. is where they would land or even continuous mm. adult education mm. to help empower them yes um, so where is the focus on that mm. and then also I'm looking at a study here that shows that agriculture contributes maybe 30 percent mm. of the share of cooperatives mm. Whereas agriculture is our largest uh, sector, mm. about 70%, 60-70% mm. uh, of employment mm. is in agriculture. This means that majority of farmers mm -hmm. are not in cooperatives. Mm -hmm. and, and that means that they can't benefit from the economies of scale, mm. from the training. Mm -hmm. So isn't that a major disconnect? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, I put it to you that cooperatives are not serving the larger population, that there are barriers. Mm -hmm. 
Would you agree and, and what are those barriers and what are you doing about really empowering the majority who are outside this net? Yes, and uh, yeah, you are very right in uh, observing that uh, cooperative, agricultural cooperatives could be forming about that percent. And um, maybe I take you uh, a bit down the memory lane. And uh, I would like to tell you that when the cooperatives started in this country, that was a long time ago in the 1900s, they were started by the then white settlers, uh, the colonial government, uh, that is the British who are here with us. And uh, during that time, most of the cooperatives were in the agricultural sector. Um, when the first cooperatives was formed, it was a daily cooperative, which was registered in the year 1908. And uh, from there, there were other cooperatives were f that were formed to market like coffee and uh, other cash crops that were growing that time. Because the colonial government wanted raw materials that would be sent to their countries, and therefore they promoted the agricultural cooperatives. So by the time cooperatives started and were growing, majority of them were in the agricultural sector. And uh, even when uh, it came, uh, actually that time, in the, those old days, Africans were not even uh, allowed to be in cooperatives because it was dominant, the domin dominant for the white. But uh, later on, around uh, 1946, Africans were allowed. So by the time the country was attaining independence in 1963, there were many now farmers who had come together to form cooperatives. So when the government now came in after independence, they found people are already organized into cooperatives in the agricultural sector, mm. and they thought this is the best way they could support the development of this country through organized structure in the cooperatives. So the government supported cooperatives. Uh, I said that time we used to have the Ministry of Cooperative Development, and they supported cooperatives. Uh, they sometimes would even give monopoly. If a cooperative, for example, is uh, producing 60% of produce in a certain area, mm. Even those people who did not belong to the cooperative, they were forced to sell through the cooperative. So you know that way now the cooperative became very strong and agricultural cooperatives were very strong. Mm -hmm. Now came around 1980s when the structural adjustment programs set in. That is now where the problems started because the structural adjustment programs required the public or the, 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 you know, the people to take care of themselves. Mm. Uh, it is like uh, that time now the World Bank was saying that uh, government should not be in the business of doing business. Mm. Mm. The people should be the ones doing the business. Mm. And therefore, the withdrawal of that support was very abrupt and farmers had not been prepared mm. to take care of the elements that they were supposed uh, uh, to work on. So that really affected the cooperatives. And in the cooperative sector, we had even to enact a new act. Mm. Our very first act was the one of 1969, which we had followed and had served the country very well, uh, when now the commissioner for cooperatives and the minister had very strong powers. Mm. Well, they were coordinating the cooperatives. So the act of 1997, it li liberalized everything. And members were told, these organizations belong to you, mm. not the government. And you know, these are people who are used to be mm. steered St by the government. Yep. Mm. So they didn't even know where to start, or what to do. Mm. So that is when we saw uh, the collapse of many of the agricultural uh, cooperatives. So the, the act of 1997 liberalized in fact, things became so bad because what they were doing, you find that uh, a cooperative was doing very well. Mm. Then they would go and split one cooperative to about three or five yeah. because everybody wants to be a chairman yep. mm. of a cooperative. Mm -hmm. And now they have been given freedom. So through that, even large cooperatives, you would go like to, if I quote like Nyeri, mm. We would ha have one cooperative called Madeira, mm. which was for the whole 
division of Madhira. Mm. Then later on, we came and found there are 10 cooperatives out of village. that mm. one. Mm. And you see now, that is where we cannot enjoy the, uh, economies, of the economies of scale, of scale mm. because now everybody wants to be a committee member, wants to be a chairman. So that way, and now the commissioner and the minister were helpless. Mm. Because of that liberalization, the act says cooperatives belong to the members. Yeah. And the members, there had not been a good opportunity to prepare them. Mm -hmm. It is not now like today. Today now we have gone on, we are trying to educate members and tell them these are your organizations. Mm. The so government, if they come in, they are just a partner. Yeah. But not to come. Even if they were to give you money, they are not supposed to come and say, use this money this way, this way. It is just for you to know this a partner who is supporting you. Isn't it a bit difficult, though? Because mm -hmm. as I look at it now, it mm -hmm. is very clear mm -hmm. that uh, individuals in a country standing on their own, mm -hmm. a lot of times are not able to make it on their own. Mm -hmm. So it would then appear as though mm -hmm. a cooperative is one aspect of life that can really help out mm -hmm. putting pooling your resources with other people, whether that be monetary, whether that be produce, whatever it is, mm -hmm. so that everybody can be helped. Mm -hmm. So you would expect that more and more people mm -hmm. entering into the system mm -hmm. would be benefit, uh, would, be, would, would be beneficial mm -hmm. to the system and to the individuals. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we're saying, hold on a minute, let's be very careful because mm -hmm. we don't want a situation where people would be swindled out of their money or their their or their product or whatever. Mm. So then how should we be able to create the balance? Because as we started the conversation in my mind, I said, well, then it seems as though this is definitely something that more and more people should be involved in mm. because mm. government is not able to take the responsibility of helping Kenyans right now yeah. to survive. Mm. It should be something that more and more Kenyans should be mm. picking up on, mm -hmm. on whatever strata you are mm. in, in society. So it, it, does it become trickier than when you're trying to regulate all these groups that might want to come and form a SAC or form a cooperative? Mm. Doesn't it become a bit challenging then? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes and no. Mm. It is um, challenging because, like I said, you know, people need to know and uh, understand yeah. what is it that they are getting into. into. So when we don't get everybody to understand, then some of them are swindled, thinking they are entering into a, into a cooperative. Mm. And like I said before, some of those, there are some of those organizations that are started, and from the word go, when they were started, the objective was to swindle people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they, are, they just, uh, even if you see them lasting for about three, four years, they are just now laying out the strategies yeah. of their exit plan mm -hmm. with the people's money. Mm -hmm. And those are not cooperatives, like I said. Now, for the cooperatives, it is true, we should see more and more people in cooperatives. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said, now we had the problem with the law, the Liberalized Act, uh, until in 2014, uh, no, 2004, we had now to uh, amend the law again to kind of introduce a little bit more control by the government. A little bit, not that much, because now mm. members had also been educated. They know these are their own organization. Mm. So I think what we have here in order to reach out to more people, we really need to do more and more education to the masses, not only to those who are within the cooperative. And uh, it is through that uh, even the cooperative principle number five allows that. We should train our leaders in cooperatives, our members, our employees, and also potential members. Mm. And I think that is where we are not doing enough. A lot of campaign for people to understand the cooperative business model the cooperative identity, mm. which is different from these others. Remember, I talked about the cooperative identity, which includes the how to define a cooperative, uh, the values mm. that we follow, and the principles that we follow. So if we were to teach these people to many, many more people, they will understand that a cooperative is a business with a human touch. Mm. It is not just like any other business. Yeah, through our cooperatives, every year we call our members to educate them. Mm. And that is the same similar campaign that we should go and even train those people who are out there 
because they are the potential people to join the cooperatives. Mm. But I think we have been more to ourselves than uh, reaching out there. To more members. Yeah, to more, to more to members. More, to more yeah. citizens. Yeah, to more citizens. Pro. Yeah. Right now, we are talking about farmers who are at the bottom of the value chain, mm -hmm. not earning the benefits in most of the sectors. Mm -hmm. We are talking about agriculture competing globally mm -hmm. because the competition is, you know, the trends are very global. I mean, we are seeing fish coming into this country mm -hmm. competing with locally produced fish. Onions as well. Even, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, we are also seeing a situation where we are talking about food security or insecurity, mm. um, needing to strengthen that. Mm. So without a doubt, agriculture is important. 70% of Kenyans are in agriculture. Yet mm. we are still not able to provide for our needs. Mm. We are not able to compete globally. Mm. Maybe the cooperative is out of date. Maybe we just need to go with the big the big farmers and the multinationals mm. that are coming and taking over everything. Mm. Do you think cooperatives are out of date? Um, no. Cooperatives are not out of date. And in this country, we cannot succeed very well in agriculture without the cooperatives. Because we have few uh, large-scale large -scale farms. Those can do well on their own, but they are very few majority of our agricultural production is in the small scale farming mm. and uh, even logically thinking it is not the same when a small farmer there is uh, struggling with the agricultural value chain on their own mm -hmm. and uh, still be able to reach the market coming together there is strength in the numbers Absolutely. yeah so coming together is the right thing to do if it's not happening at the scale that we want, it is for us now to address those problems to make sure more farmers are organized into cooperatives. Okay. And uh, that is what we have been telling even the, the county governments now that the county func uh, the cooperative function is devolved, that they need to bring farmers together. And I know when the devolution took place, uh, many of the governors uh, started organizing people into cooperatives. And, uh, uh, and ensuring that uh, there are more people forming cooperatives. And we, as the Cooperative University, we also joined in that. Um, I should have said that um, at the university, we have three divisions. We have the division of uh, finance and administration, which I had. We have another uh, division of uh, academic affairs. There is a DFC heading it. But we also have another... Um, uh, important division uh, called the Cooperative uh, Development, Research and Innovation. And through this division, we have outreach programs. We have gone out there to support the counties. We have um, signed MOUs with some of the counties to help them to educate the people within the counties to form cooperatives mm -hmm. and to help them to improve on the entire agricultural value chain. Because the cooperative is a, is a beautiful model for those who understand it. Mm. And if you people understood it, uh, they would wonder why they were struggling <laughs> on, their, <laughs> In the first place. on their own. Yes, yes, there was this. I yeah. see a role, though, mm. a Prof, of the national government mm -hmm. uh, majorly on this, on education on awareness creation, on conversion of people. Mm. Because if we have a state department for uh, cooperatives mm. and it's the one in charge of basically looking and ensuring there is implementation of the National Cooperative Society's development policy mm. and the laws, mm. this is what the government should be, the national government should be doing. Mm. Dedicating a lot of resources and money into this state department mm. through the university and other organs mm to create awareness yeah. for people to know a lot more about cooperatives so for people to see the the need for joining op cooperatives mm. and then at the local level when people now start forming cooperatives mm. the county government can start supporting them yes yeah i think i i agree with you to that uh, extent yeah because the the state department of cooperatives if it is properly funded they may not be the ones to implement the training but uh, if you look at that national cooperative development policy, 
the Cooperative University of Kenya is recognized as the center of excellence in cooperative education and training. Mm. Mm. So that way, then we would be also empowered, you know, funded, mm. so that we can run those short programs that reach out to the cooperators down there in the grassroots. Mm. We, as a university, we follow other two ministries. Um, we say that uh, because our mother Your ministry education. was cooperative, mm. but now since we became a university, <laughs> uh, chartered in 2016, we are responsible to the Minister of Education. Mm. Yes. And the Minister of Education is, um, as far as university is concerned, they are concerned with the degree programs, master's programs, mm. PhD programs, and that kind of thing. So these other lower uh, caliber of programs, mm. they would be very well funded through the State Department of Cooperatives, mm -hmm. and we can do a very good job. Mm. Because even today, even with meager resources, we have not dropped our certificate programs, okay. certificate and diploma programs. Mm. Because when we look back, like the diploma in cooperative management is what has brought the cooperative movement where it is today. Mm. We used to produce these graduates. They are the ones who are working in the Ministry of Cooperative Development, mm -hmm. supervising the cooperatives. Mm -hmm. And then we would now train the managers and other staff working through those diploma programs. So the problem is they are not uh, budgetally supported. So we have to ask the students who come for them to pay. So if we could get some subsidy, then we would get more of these uh, students coming. Mm -hmm. And um, currently, I think like Wajiro had said, we are also having the TVET programs uh, that is now, you know, what is carrying the day and that is what the government has recommended. We are now moving in that direction. So as a cooperative university, because I said we had not dropped our diploma programs, we have applied to TVET to accredit us as a, an institute of TVET so that once we get that, then we are able now to produce relevant, you know, more relevant graduates at that level yeah. who can go and work with these uh, cooperatives. Yeah. So that is in the process. Mm. Uh, we have already made the application. Uh, we are waiting uh, for TVET, the TVET, the, the TVET authority to come and uh, assess us uh, so that they can give us an okay mm. to run those programs. As we conclude the conversation, Prof, I'm going to... Uh, play a role that is normally played by C.T. Muga, our colleague who's on leave, mm. talks about including cooperative training mm. in our national curriculum mm. so that at primary level, mm. at secondary level, mm. people are already trained and taught about importance of cooperatives. Mm. You have a role, I think, to play in lobbying for that, mm. for the inclusion of this in the curriculum, don't you? Y yes. And uh, really, I think this is a thing that uh, I would like to see happen. I remember uh, sometimes back, uh, I think more even like 20 years ago, mm. we were taken for a seminar by the ILO, you know, the International Labor Organization, they have a branch that supports cooperatives. And that workshop, what they wanted us to do, we had met in Namibia, all the countries of Africa, and what they wanted us to do is what you have correctly said, to introduce cooperative education into our school system. Mm. In fact, they were stating from starting from very low, even from the pre-primary mm. to primary, uh, then to secondary schools, and then now the, the colleges and universities. Yeah. So when we came back, I remember we endeavored now as Kenyans to put something together, mm. and we go to the Minister of Education. And uh, as we did that, there was that response that, uh, you know, the 844 curriculum is overloaded. <laughs> now you want us to add something else. Add add something else. <laughs> it, uh, it will not work. And Let's uh, encourage you, Prof. Yes. Keep, keep pushing so that. And on the competency based? The, the competency based for as universities, mm. we are waiting for guidelines. Okay. Because we have to be given gu guidelines by the Minister of Education oh, and also the Commission for University Education. Mm. So once we are given, we shall know when to start preparing our our staff, our lecturers, and also revising our curriculum to reflect that. 
Thank you. Thank yes. you very much, Prof. Professor Esther Gishero is the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Finance, Planning and Administration at the Cooperative University of Kenya. She's been here with us to talk to us about the cooperative movement. We'll invite you again. This, there's a lot more to discuss. Yes. Asante sana.